Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about Janome Skyline S7. In this video, I'm going to talk about the basic operations of this machine. Now, I have a couple other videos. One is the machine overview, and one is the settings video. Those you also might want to watch along with this video to kind of give you fuller explanations of some of these things. But right now, let's just get started. So when you turn on your machine, you want to just be able to sit down and sew. So when you turn your machine on, it's going to go right here to straight stitch, center needle position. That's as long as you don't have it set to resume a previous stitch, then that's why I refer to settings. Um, but even if you do, if you push the little X in the window, it'll get you right back to regular sewing. So it's really nice to have that as your default. Okay. When you're sewing, if you do a lot of garment sewing, you may be doing a back stitch at the end and at the beginning. There's a really neat stitch that builds those things in, and that is stitch number two. So stitch number two, I'm going to show you right over here. We're starting to sew, and when you start to sew, uh, hang on to that thread tail, no matter what machine you're using, for the first couple of stitches. So I'm going to slow it. I'm going to slow it down here a little bit so you can see what's happening. So it'll stitch forward, four stitches, stitch back, and then keep sewing. When you get to the end of your seam, you stop, press the reverse button, keep your foot on the pedal until it stops. Now I've got my foot all the way down. Now it also cut the thread because I set that up in the settings menu to cut the thread and leave the little thread tails on the back right, right there. The neat thing about stitch number two is when you start sewing, it stitches forward, four, back, four, and it's, it, when it stitches back, it goes right to where you stopped, right where, to where you started. And same thing at the end. If you stop sewing here, it goes back four stitches, forward four stitches and stops right there. It's a very accurate way to build in that back stitch into your sewing. Now stitch number three is very similar to that except it does a locking stitch at the beginning. I'll show you what that looks like. Now with this machine you can just start sewing. You don't have to put your foot down. Just there you go. So notice it gave a little bit of a locking stitch at the beginning. At the end all I have to do is push that and notice this is little lights blinking. That means it's getting ready to do that locking stitch. Keep your foot down on the pedal. It does that little locking stitch. And then it cuts the thread, lifts the foot, lifts the needle. And there's a little knot on the back. Now this little knot is not quite as secure as doing a back stitch, but it's a lot less noticeable. So it kind of depends on what you're going for. On some of your, um, if you're doing quilt piecing and you have some Y seams, you may want to build in this little uh, locking stitch at the end of your Y seam to kind of keep things together, but also reduce the bulk. Okay, <clears throat> then we also have some other stitches. Uh, you're probably familiar with the uh, zigzag. The M on this zigzag stitch means that when you widen it and, and narrow it, it widens and narrows from the middle outwards. The R means when you widen and narrow that, it stays the same on the right and widens and narrows to the left. This is a good one to have if you're overcasting, say, <clears throat> the hem of some jeans or something before you turn up that um, edge and stitch it. If you want to have that a little wider, it's going to stay, the needle's going to stay the same, drop on, off the edge of the fabric, but you can make it a little bit wider this way. Now, to put this back into the default settings, you can either choose a different stitch or just reselect the stitch and it puts it right back to default. Okay, down here you have where you can widen and narrow and lengthen and shorten your stitches. If you expand this, you also have where you can change your thread tension. So if you're doing a, a satin stitch, you may want to have your um, none of your bobbin threads showing. You want to just have it nice and satiny looking. You may want to lower your thread tension. Uh, presser foot pressure is good if you're sewing 
nits that tend to get stretched out and, and wavy and puckery, you might want to lower your, um, your, thread your presser foot pressure. And that's how tightly this pushes against the fabric. That's what that does. Okay, and then we can close that. So, uh, and then there's other stitches that you can use. Now, let's go up here. Right here, this little thing here has to do with, if you're sewing along and you want your sewing along, it lifts up. And you can take a look at your stitches and just keep on sewing. There you go. When you turn that off, it just keeps the foot down when you're done. That's what that's for. But it's a nice little feature if you want to have that up. And notice, of course, when it lifts it up, I start sewing, it puts it right back down. I don't need to do anything to make the presser foot go back down. Okay. So right now, these up here are grayed out. But let's go back into here. This means that you can do a twin needle. Now, the twin needle is an accessory that comes with your... Um, I'll get it out and show it to you comes with your machine, the twin needle looks like this. And you can do some nice decorative stitches with that. Um, it's mainly for decorative purposes, but when you have that, what it does is it makes it so that you cannot stitch too wide because that twin needle would make a wide enough stitch, if you made it too wide, it might hit the needle plate or the foot. So this will guard that. And once you turn this off, it gives you a little warning. Just make sure you've got the correct needle in. And yes, we do. Okay, that's what that's for. I'm gonna go back to a different stitch. Here we go. This is for your, um, your dual feed foot. If you press that, it will only See, it grays out everything else. It just gives you basically two sets of stitches that you can do. So let's turn that one off. Press. I love those little warning banners because that makes sure that you do uh, check everything, make sure it's in good shape before you get started sewing. Okay, let's go down here to the bottom. I've referenced this, this a couple times. This here is if you are going to and those has two pages up here for the utility stitches. This is the second page. And then if we continue on, we can go in through buttonholes. And now, past buttonholes, it's starting to get into decorative stitches. Notice that these two change. So the uh, utility stitches and buttonhole stitches are right there. If you look up here at the um, thread chart, or the stitch chart, these two are included in that tab there. Now, applique stitches are included in your decorative stitches. So if I press this, I can go to applique, the applique group, the uh, heirloom stitches, quilting, satin, decorative, bridge stitches, uh, et cetera, all through here. And it's got two pages. We can page ahead like that. So you could get quickly to a stitch that you need by just, okay, let's say the one I want is in the pictograph. It's right in there. I find that right here and I can go to the stitch that I want. It has two pages right there. Okay, <coughs> this one, this button here, appears when you are doing decorative stitches. So if I just wanted to do one of those hearts, I could do this, press, and I just have one. If I do it this way, now I've got a whole line of those hearts. That's what that means. This little one here, is if I wanted to turn it over. Now, this change here is grayed out because it doesn't really matter. This is going to look the same whether it's turned this way or this way. But I'm going to go to the little helicopter. And notice you can turn the helicopter the other way, too. That's what those buttons are for. Okay, so I'm going to go back into regular sewing here. So you have these groups here. Page ahead. Page back here. And you can go to your quilting stitches. Like if you want to do quarter-inch piecing, you would go, let me go back up to that, all right, quilting, yes, quarter inch piecing right there, and it puts, it tells you what foot to use, gives you the correct stitch length and needle position to give you uh, a perfect quarter inch seam. And you can still change that by moving your needle over a little bit and lengthen your stitch if you want to. Okay, here is lettering. Now, le the lettering, I'm going to get into more of that when we get into the um, 
stitch combination, but just know that you've got block letters uh, giving you an uppercase and lowercase. Uh, you've got uh, script letters, and those are done in that nice uh, fine rayon thread that's, it really looks nice in this, also uppercase and lowercase. And then you've got nine millimeter block letters, which are only capital letters because they're nine millimeters wide as opposed to the capital letters in that one being seven millimeters. Um, sometimes I'll do a combination where I'm doing a, my capital letter in the, the block and then my lowercase in the, the regular uh, smaller block letters. Okay, and then we've got a sewing applications. This is a really handy thing to do. If there's a procedure or a uh, process that you're really unsure about, you can get into, uh, say for instance, you want to do applique. In applique, you can choose the, the kind of stitch that you want, and then you can uh, adjust it that way. But right now, it's right what the settings that you need it to be. So it's a good way to quickly get to, to uh, the stitch that you want. Then you've always got this back button if you need to do that. Um, let's go back here. Okay. <clears throat> so it's going to walk you through these various steps. That's the nice thing about that. Uh, uh, it sort of chooses the stitch for you, but it also helps you with the procedure. This also is a way to choose the stitches for you. Okay, so let's get back. Oh, yes, let me talk about this. The cornering thing, what we're talking about here, that's the cornering. That means if you have a stitch, I'm gonna go back here to this. Some of these stitches will have multiple stitches going back and forth. And if you come to a corner and turn a corner, see like on that point right there, right here, you don't want to have it stitched back and off into the side like that. So you would press that and it would, what it would do is restart from the beginning of the stitch so that you would have it stitched cleanly without any little extra piece of thread off the edge. That's a really nice feature right there. And then of course you can always switch your uh, applique to be on the left side instead of on the right. Okay, let's go back here. Let's get out of that and then I'm gonna go back to regular sewing. When you touch this icon here, it's going to give you, get you right back into straight stitching. Um, so that's a, a nice, every page that you go to, the one that's lit up is gonna be the stitch that you've got. That's the stitch that it's going to show, and it's always gonna show you the correct foot to use. Really nice feature. And then, let's get back into regular sewing. Let me page back, here we go, here we go. Okay, this one here is for uh, taking something out of the memory. Right now, we have nothing in the memory. It just says no file to show, so I don't have anything in the memory. Let me get out of that. And this is, of course, your settings menu. Again, watch that video. It's gonna be very helpful for that. This is your lockout key. What that does is it makes it so that pressing your start, stop, or your foot control, nothing happens. Really helpful if you're doing your maintenance in your machine to have the lockout. Uh, it's also a good idea if you have kids in the house, do the lockout. Just get used to doing it whenever you're away from your machine. Or <laughs> if you're teaching a child to sew, that's a good uh, habit to get them into also. Raise the needle bar slowly. Okay, so if you get that, that just means turn your hand wheel. There you go. Then we can do that lockout. There we go. Um, I like to have my needle down when I turn off my machine. It's just safer, especially if you have little kids in the house. They're always curious. You say, don't touch mommy's machine. Well, okay, guess what? You tell them to do that, and that they're going to be curious. Why not? Okay, so lower your needle into your fabric before you turn off your machine. It's a safety feature. <laughs> I do that all the time at home. Okay, so that's the basic operations of your machine. We've got lots of other videos that you can watch. If this was a helpful video, give us a thumbs up. If you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. And so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Happy sewing. Bye.